Yes. Okay, we'll call the roll. Okay. Uh, David. Here. Oh. Gray. Here. Uh, Gary Edwards. Amy Harding. Hi, nice to meet everybody. We have Lisa Parshley. Nicholas Dunning. Joan Cathy. Present, I'm here. <clears throat> Trevor Palmer. Here. Elaine Clam. Here. Kirsten Presley. Richard Moon. No Renee. Chad Sutter. And Aaron Robertson. Yes, I'm here. Okay. And then we have Christina Colbert here too. All right. Okay. So, um, so we don't have a quorum, so we, we're not going to ask for approving the agenda or last time minutes unless we get another eighth person. And what, what who all else is here in the meeting? Why don't we introduce them? I will introduce staff that we have here. Okay. First off, uh, in the room with you, as far as I know is uh, Laura Glover um, and Hope Springer. Is there a set? I can't see from the picture. Is there anybody else, a staff that I'm missing in there? No, no. Okay. Um, well, presenting today, we have Scott Key, uh, Danielle Winsky, see Karen Weiss, I'm Rob Putner. Good morning. And Jessica Kelly. Morning. And that's public works staff. Additionally, um, I see for other presenters, we have uh, Corey Carlton, uh, Jennifer Johnson, and, and then we have uh, from external, we have from two from the city of Olympia, we have Ron Jones. And Gary Franks. Yeah, sorry, my camera was slow. Thank you. <laughs> and then um, additionally, we have Steve Gilmore, Republic. I think, did I miss anybody? I think that's everybody. Okay. Jeff, Jennifer mm -hmm. Post is also here uh, representing the Master Recycler Composter oh, Program. Go. Okay, I know. Okay, I missed you. Sorry about that. And and you? Oh. Are you introduced? <clears throat> uh, I'm Christina with the Washington State Department of Ecology. Okay. Oh, I didn't see you there. Okay, very good. He's hiding in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, very good. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, okay, so any public comments before we start with the business part of the meeting? Okay, hearing none. So old business. Um, I'm going to bring up one thing. Uh, and this is just informational again, but uh, in the minutes uh, from last meeting, to describe that that uh, we kind of assume that Peterson Energy is going to take credit for the solar panels and stuff. But there's, um, I'd like to have um, staff drill down a little bit more because I work not in the waste but also on the energy side of things professionally. And there's called something called the renewable energy certificates. There's actually certificates that are registered with you know, uh, national um, associations or, or organizations. And legally you can't even talk about, oh, Thurston County has a solar farm generating uh, renewable energy unless you actually own those certificates. So we need to be careful about how we, you know, when that, gets put in place that we need to be careful that we talk about that in, in the correct way. Oh, there's Gary, so. We have a quorum. We've got a quorum. <laughs> Was I a hold up on a quorum? You're it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I... Well, you made it, you made it a reality now. <laughs> yeah, <it's all> good. <laughs> okay, um, so anyway, if, if we can find out 
so when we're talking about that uh, solar farm that goes up, you know, probably we need to talk about it as not Thurston County solar farm, but this is, uh, you know, PSE has a, a solar farm on there or whoever the developer, you know, I don't know actually who, but we need to be precise about that because otherwise we're implying we have an attribute that isn't owned by the county. So just want to make sure we're clear on that going forward. So anyway, not a big deal, but I just want to make sure we don't, you know, are mischaracterizing what, what's going on out there, which I think is a great idea, by the way. Okay, new business. Um, may I, may I we, cut into this yeah. briefly? Now that we have a quorum, we, can, we should go back and approve yeah. the and the minutes. Yeah, that's great. So uh, any, uh, so yeah, let's go back in and for the minutes last time, uh, people should have received that in their email. And uh, any comments, corrections, questions about last month's February minutes that were sent out? No question, no me. Okay, so can I entertain a motion for um, approving the minutes from last time? I shall move. Second? Second. Second. Okay, Gary got it here in the room. Uh, all in favor of the approving the minutes from last February, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Okay, great. They are passed. And now let's go to the agenda for today that also was sent out. Uh, any discussion, uh, comments, corrections, clarifications? Okay. We have a motion on that. I shall Second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, we have an agenda. And so let's go on to um, new business. Um, we've already informally introduced guests and talked about other things uh, up to that point. So uh, let's go to new business and uh, recycling waste production program. And is Rob gonna kick this off or Danielle, Danielle or who's gonna take this? Well, I'll kick it off. Go ahead. By sharing my screen, let's see. All right, I feel confident. Is that showing up for everybody? Yes. That's good. Yes. Okay, uh, once again, I'm Scott Keith. I'm the Communication and Outreach Supervisor at Public Works, and uh, we're appreciative of the opportunity to give you all an update on our waste reduction and recycling education outreach programs, as well as an update from the Master Recycler Compost Program. Uh, first, I want to give you um, an update on the team. I know, um, well, let's see. First, unfortunately, uh, Danielle is leaving us to go to Pierce County. Um, we're excited for her new opportunity, but her last day with us will be March 15th. And so that means uh, we'll be hiring for two ENO2 positions. Um, Danielle's for the commercial and county government, as well as the uh, vacant youth position. And then once we get those two positions, we'll hire um, the new ENO1 position who will provide um, program support uh, for our ENO2s, as well as support to our public works communications efforts. Um, and then you all know the rest of the team, Rob, who's been with us for a long time, Hope who's uh, our new you know, one we've seen a couple of times and then we're excited to get to work with Corey and Jenny, of course. And so now I will turn it over to Rob for the update on our residential and multifamily programs. Thanks, Scott. Um, so this year in 2024, we are continuing uh, to produce and um, provide billing inserts for, that will be distributed to all of LeMay's residential customers. This is something we started or resumed last year in 2023. Um, it had been put on pause for several years uh, and we got a really good response from it last year. So we're, we're looking forward to doing that again. Uh, we just had the second billing insert of the year begin distribution this uh, this past week. Uh, so we're looking forward to to promoting some programs like our Master Recycler Composter workshops and um, any information that we need to share to uh, residents that way. We're also building out our um, library of 
material of literature. Uh, we added three publications that were uh, Spanish translated already this year. So these are rat cards for the Waste and Recovery Center for the Rainier and Rochester Dropbox facility and Hazo House. And as needs are identified um, and as opportunities come up, we'll be uh, adding to our library with additional translated versions as well of other materials as well. Go to the next slide. Uh, every year we have our Christmas tree recycling program. It's always been a success uh, keeping this organic material out of the landfill stream. Uh, in 2023, uh, I should say that the, the data has, it's a little incomplete right now. We're getting pretty close to, to finalizing it for the year, um, but we have a few missing pieces in our data from last year, uh, as well as this current year. So um, just take this with a, a grain of salt. We're working on fine tuning our process so that we can have more accurate information in, in future years. But it looks like we diverted roughly 3,000 trees between our three solid waste facilities and the, the uh, jurisdictions that also participate throughout this county. Um, so a little bit over 3,000 trees, which is roughly uh, a little under 122,000 pounds uh, of organic material. And even though we, you know, the, the numbers aren't completely finalized yet, it does look like an increase over last year's numbers. So uh, it's looking positive and we're planning to continue it again in the following season um, between 2024 and 2025. Next slide. Uh, you well, might know that ask, we have, I'm sorry. Rob, could I ask you a question about that? Sure. Do you participate with the tribe at all down on the Nisqually Delta? They put these uh, Christmas trees in for, fish habitat for uh, breeding. Do you know anything about that? We have not been involved in that before. No, I, and, and unfortunately I don't have much information about that. Uh, what do you do with the trees now? Right now, the tr well, uh, a few different things happen to the trees that I'm aware of between the different jurisdictions. And the, the trees that come into the Waste and Recovery Center or the Rainier Rochester Dropbox, those are ground up and turned into compost. Those would be sent to Brady Trucking. Uh, some of the other jurisdictions, Tumwater uh, has a different method of, of, you know, they still grind them up and turn them into either a mulch or a compost. They send them to a different facility. And you know, Tanino manages them differently. Um, as long as they're being kept out of the landfill, that's my main priority. Um, but um, yeah, so they're managed a few different ways, but most of them end up being ground into compost and sent to uh, Brady Trucking. Could you maybe check with your folks and see if there's anybody at the tribe you could talk to? Because they use a lot of trees and it benefits the, the whole fishery process. That's a great idea. And I will look into that. Thank you. Do you have any contacts? Who I, work I with do them? not. I just happen to know that they do that. That's okay. All. So I thought maybe it'd help both of us out. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Uh, I've made a note and we'll look into that. Any other questions on that? Um, I'm, I'm just wondering um, about, uh, have you or anybody else done a life cycle assessment on cutting trees uh, then mulching them versus people that would buy an artificial tree that's you know good for however many decades <laughs> an artificial tree would be good for? Um, I have not, and I'm not aware if anyone else here has. I'd be interested to know if they have. Um, I've I've heard anecdotally from from folks who have read studies that they were claiming that cutting down natural trees actually does it typically um, has a smaller environmental footprint, but I I don't have any information to really back that up with. Thank you. Sure. And I guess the other thing uh, on, your, on your rack cards, um, could you send electronic versions of that to the, the SWAC just so they can see what you've done? Yeah, you bet. Thank you. See, I'm just making a note. Okay. Sure. Um, all right. So community presentation series, you may have heard about this. Uh, maybe you participated. We're partnering with both LeMay Pacific Disposal this year and the Master Recycler Composter to provide six uh, 
bi-monthly pr presentations on various topics. And we kicked off this series last month on February 28th, I guess last week, uh, with the topic of business organics law. And these presentations are every other month. They're on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, generally, they're towards the end of the month. We did have to change the date for the de December presentation so that it didn't conflict with the holidays. Uh, but the organics management law presentation was our <coughs> kickoff last week. Our next one will be in April. The, it will be more geared towards residents where they can bring their questions about what's recyclable, compostable, or just how do I manage different materials, things that they've been curious or confused about. And then we'll be gearing our June presentation towards organizers of a community events. They can be big events, small events, doesn't matter, different resources that we can offer them, tips and suggestions for keeping their uh, waste reduced and managed properly. In August, we'll be focusing on activities for youth. We'll be um, talking, gearing that towards teachers, informal educators, caretakers, parents, anyone who's dealing with youth in some capacity, uh, how they can uh, address topics of recycling, waste reduction, compost, any uh, waste related topics with uh, these kids. In October, we'll be targeting multifamily property managers and, and residents uh, who want to see recycling improved or um, expanded at their properties. And then in December, we'll go back towards more of a strictly residential uh, presentation about hard to recycle materials, things that, aren't not, things that are not accepted at the curb, but might have some drop off opportunities available in the community. And we'll be assisted by MRC volunteers at, at several of these events. Next slide. Okay, so last year you might be familiar that we did a six month study of contamination at multifamily properties in their commingled recycling. We updated the stickers on the commingled recycling carts and then we, we went out each month to five different properties evaluating the um, overall contamination of these carts and then as well as identifying what the top contaminants in each of these carts was. And what we found was the updated information actually did help reduce uh, the, it helped curb some of the contamination. And we found that the top contaminants by far were um, recyclables inside of bags, whether the bags were paper or plastic, stuff inside of bags was the biggest issue. So that really helped steer our planning for this year, um, and you can go to the next slide. So this year, we're continuing that study with a follow-up uh, that started in February and will last through, eight, uh, through August. So we should have a report in November. We're returning to the same five sites that we went to last year. We will continue to look at the total contamination at these sites, as well as the top five categories. Uh, and this time we'll be testing a few different materials including a reusable in-unit tote bag that residents can use to collect their recyclables in their home and then transport it to the outdoor recycling cart, such as you're seeing in the image um, from Hen Hennepin County, Minnesota, right there. Uh, we'll also be offering uh, and installing waste station signage, such as the one in the photo, uh, as well as specialty printed guides for residents that address some of the unique needs and challenges at multifamily properties. Uh, and we started this in February with assistance from the Master Recycler Composter volunteers. Um, and I saw this morning that we had a few more sign up for the upcoming site visits. So I'm, I'm really excited to, again, be out in the field with them and take their training from uh, the classroom into the field. Next Could slide. I comment oh. on, on that? Sure. This, this is, yeah, Joan Cathy from uh, Tumwater. Um, and I was reading through the materials uh, yesterday uh, that we were going to have for today. And um, I noticed this putting things in bags and then putting them in this very thing you're talking about. So last night at the council meeting, I decided to bring it up and just said I was going to be having this meeting today. But uh, this is one of the of the top contaminants because I don't think it's only multifamily that's no. doing it. And so I went into a big thing about, you know, don't put in bags of, you know, 
paper bags or definitely plastic bags and uh, uh, waxed eloquent about it. And, uh, and I didn't threaten anyone or anything, but they, um, this morning uh, in my email, I got three separate emails from uh, people, residents in, T in uh, Tumwater saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for reminding us of that. And um, they were they were glad that they, one person said I knew it, but I was lazy. And, <laughs> and the two others said, uh, that, you know, it was just a good reminder. And could you continue at council meetings, giving us good tips if, uh, you know, if you have some from your meetings and so forth. So I was encouraged by that. And, yeah. Thank you for reminding them. I think we are we all have a tendency to, you know, forget things sometimes and be a little lazy. So we have to help each other. Yeah. Well, we've got three families and some water helped by it so far. Awesome. <laughs> and hopefully these tools will help remind people as well. Yes. Yes. Very good. Okay. Uh, the, so the details for this are still tentative, but we are planning in an Earth Day compost giveaway event at the Waste and Recovery Center. Uh, this is scheduled for Saturday, May 4th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. This would be at the parking lot for Closed Loop Park where the old <laughs> free mulch pile was. And we are doing this in collaboration with the Master Recycler Composter uh, in-person compost workshop that's going to be there uh, on the 4th. It's... Um, so this is designed so you can come to the compost workshop, learn how to compost, and then head back to the parking lot and pick up some compost. It's also open to anyone whether or not you attend uh, the, the educational workshop. Uh, but this is to celebrate Earth Day, which is on April 22nd, International Compost Awareness Week, which is the following week on the, from the 5th through the 11th. Um, and um, we're also, uh, fulfilling the part of the compost procurement ordinance where uh, we are to provide education to the public about the benefits of compost. Uh, so we'll be um, receiving some donated compost from Brady Trucking. Uh, and we're thinking that, you know, residents or, or maybe even schools could come and pick up up to a, a half yard of compost per vehicle. And we'll also have on-site education for residents who participate. If they uh, want to learn more about home composting, they want to learn more about proper composting at the curb, keeping contamination out, uh, or even to sign up for curbside collection service so that we can continue to divert more of the organic material out of the garbage stream. More, more information will be coming as it's firmed up. Next slide. We are also exploring a potential pilot program at the Waste and Recovery Center for a bicycle donation station in the recycling area. Uh, so we've been talking with Intercity Transit as well as an organization called Bikes for Kids out of Tacoma that are interested in receiving bicycles. For years, we've been receiving bicycles in the public tipping area as garbage or as scrap metal. Um, and these groups actually came to us. They were looking for opportunities to, to receive uh, bikes on a regular basis. Uh, so Intercity Transit is looking to receive the adult bikes and Bikes for Kids is interested in youth-sized bikes. Uh, we've spoken with partnerships uh, in Seattle and the city of Tacoma. Uh, city, of, city of Seattle has bicycle donation stations at both of their transfer stations with Bike Works, an organization up there. And city of Tacoma is uh, working with Bikes for Kids. They separate bikes into a separate area. Uh, and this nonprofit comes to pick them up. So uh, we are working out details to, to to see if we can arrange a pilot program and see if we can uh, expand this type of partnership down to Thurston County. Next slide. Fix It Fair is another uh, potential event. We are in the very early stages of working with both the Evergreen State College and Lacey Makerspace to provide a free community repair event at some time in May. Uh, at least that's the tentative plan right now. Uh, this is an event where members of the public residents can bring uh, clothing or household items that is in need of minor repair and volunteers would be on hand to help facilitate that repair. Uh, provide some education about how to maintain and repair common items, 
um, and keep things out of the landfill that that, that generally can't be recycled. Um, so this is to help address a different part of the waste stream. And details are uh, will be coming. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, and finally, uh, in regards to youth outreach, we had a fall 2023 issue of the Trash Talk newsletter go out. Um, we distributed 4,300 copies to 143 classrooms at 28 schools. Uh, right now, we just approved the proof for the spring 2024 issue uh, that will be uh, hopefully printed in the next couple of weeks and uh, distributed late, later this month. We actually had a few more school districts sign up, so we're looking at 5,000 copies this time. Um, we added schools in Rainier and Yelm, so we're excited for that. And we're also still providing some assistance to Pleasant Glade Elementary School as they continue to divert food waste from their dining operations and expand their durables and reusable uh, dining tool program. And that's what I have. Thank you. Uh, All right, we'll turn it over to Danielle for an update on the commercial and county government programs. Thank you, Scott. Um, so most of what I'm going to be sharing today is going to be largely about the organics management law. Um, I know the committee has been interested on some updates on what we've been doing. So I really wanted to dedicate um, a lot of time to that um, during this update. So to start, um, since we last um, presented our programs in, I think it was September, I've done a lot of work um, for the organics management law, um, which includes presenting to all, uh, local jurisdictions um, across the state in wow. a um, meeting hosted by the Department of Ecology. Um, and this presentation was specifically focused on what we are doing, the outreach efforts and materials that I've developed and providing that information to other jurisdictions who may be struggling or at a roadblock. Um, in response to this, the Department of Ecology is also using some of our materials as examples for other um, governments to use as part of their toolkit, um, which is really um, exciting because we are considered Thurston County as being looked at as a, as a leader in in the organics management law as it continues to move forward and as more and more um, counties and governments are affected by this. Um, as Rob has also mentioned, we started um, our 2024 presentation series with LeMay um, on the, our first presentation was on the business organics management law. So we had local businesses there specifically, we, um, have interest from um, St. Martin's University, from Runstad and Wright, who um, owns the properties for like the Department of Corrections. They want us to come in and help them set up a green team and help uh, organize um, organics on their sites and how we can make that happen for their specific needs. Um, and then um, it was just overall really great to be able to put this information out there for for businesses to participate in. Um, next slide. So additionally, um, I have been providing some technical assistance to um, other local businesses. Um, Evergreen State College, I met with them in November to walk through their campus to see where they're um, not only where their organics um, could be placed, but also to see what other recycling and waste reduction um, areas they could use help with. Um, but the main focus was on what we can do with the organics there. Um, they already have an organic system in place for the back of house. Um, it was interesting to learn that they don't have a green team currently because of the student population decreased during COVID. However, it could be something that they um, can bring back in the future. And we kind of started to brainstorm some ideas to help them collect organics from food scraps from the students in the main eating area. Um, 
in partnership with LeMay, we have also um, been providing assistance to the Lacey Costco and seeing what they are currently doing with their organics and then what potentially uh, additional options they have um, as far as um, waste recovery goes. Um, that's still kind of a work in progress. So nothing more other than an initial kind of site assessment. I've also gone out to Harbor Wholesale, again, an initial site assessment to see what they're kind of doing with some of their organic materials that they get back, how they manage it, what other options they have for waste reduction and recycling. And then finally, um, I've also provided assistance to like Latin Cider, who had questions about what they're currently doing and if that falls in line with the business organics management law, since they give a lot of their materials to um, pig farmers, um, which it totally complies within the realms of what is acceptable for waste management. Um, additionally, I have been working with internal and external partners to spread the message about the law. Um, LeMay has been a huge partner in this, has been helping tremendously with um, really making connections that I did not have. Um, and then as well as being really excited to share um, the information with, with their customers. Joan, I see you have a question. Uh, I do. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, when you go, uh, like, say, to the Costco's or places that are even the Evergreen State College, places where they're serving food, um, do you ever make any suggestions or comments to them about using recyclable uh, containers or plates or cups and lids and that kind of thing? Evergreen State College, they do already have um, a pretty, pretty strong program for um, like recycling. I, I almost positive, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, this was about six months ago now, that they have um, plastic plates and they have utensils and they have a whole conveyor system that moves everything along into a um, into a washer. Um, we did talk about and made suggestions for their cafe, which does not have currently a, you know, they use paper cups, disposable cups, but uh, seeing if they'd be open to doing like a, a discount to students that bring in a reusable mug instead of using one of the paper cups and switching to, um, you know, wood stir sticks and other more reusable items versus, uh, you know, the disposable items. So that it has been something that I've been trying to keep a focus as well mm -hmm. when meeting with these businesses. Yeah, I, I noticed that the um, Cumwater um, Costco, the, uh, the, the plates that they put things on um, are recyclable. Um, but the lids they put on anything are not. And it, it and I'm wondering why places would do one piece of their, um, uh, like say cups, you know, the, the cup isn't, or the cup is, and the top is, or isn't, or that kind of thing. Does, is it pricing or what do they tell you when you talk about it to, that's honestly that's honestly a great question and I do not have the answer for that um but I would be happy to to make a note of it to have that conversation and kind of dig into more of it I know with businesses a lot of it does boil down to the bottom line and what's going to be the most affordable in the long term but definitely that's a great question to dive deeper into okay thanks well I've, I've gone back to ask and um one of the managers said, I didn't even realize that. I didn't, I didn't realize that, I can't remember which place it was that, you know, they had recyclable cups, but not lids. Well, all McDonald's do that. Their cups are recyclable and their lids are not. No, it's just- I believe, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, it's a curious thing to me if you're buying something, you know, they look, some of them look like they're made by the same company. Yeah, I believe anything that is um, had food or like, especially the, the cups, they have a plastic liner. So technically they are not recyclable, 
um, even though they claim to be recyclable. It's kind of like the pizza boxes where they say they're recyclable. They are not. They are also should be going into the garbage um, just because typically like with pizza boxes, they have lots of food and grease particles. Um, but with cut paper cups, those are usually lined in a plastic or wax that does not break down in recycling. Some of these places I'm talking about plastic cups. So plastic, often one one piece lid or cup is recycled and the other isn't both being plastic. So anyway, I'm just on the watch out for that. And if I have a chance, I, I and I see the, um, know someone who works there or I, or I find the manager or something, I just ask the question. And a couple of them have said, I didn't even notice. <laughs> I, said, um, well, I, I can speak to that if, uh -huh. if I may. I sure. count. Councilman Palmer here from City of Yelm, but uh, yeah, we've um, I've been in the restaurant industry almost twenty years. Uh, uh -huh. Just kind of recently started leaving, but a lot of it has to do with uh, cost and the way it holds the beverages or the uh -huh. uh, food. Uh, but a lot of the actual like fully recyclable products are almost twice as expensive as mm -hmm. the uh, like your styrofoams, let's say, or your plastic cups. So a lot of it, uh, especially with restaurants having such narrow margins. Uh, a lot of it comes down to cost for them because mm -hmm. when you start paying twice as much for a product that really adds to the bottom line for especially mom and pop places. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Trevor. That insight is definitely appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Styrofoam makes me uh, shiver. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions about the update so far that we've worked on for the organics management law? Okay, next slide, please. So moving forward, um, I actually met yesterday, Hope and I met yesterday with the Thurston County Food Bank to find food rescue opportunities that we can highlight. Um, this, the meeting yesterday was extremely educational and insightful and I can see a lot of potential for future um, program partnerships with the Thurston County Food Bank. I'm going to be compiling all my notes um, and building a web page, um, at least the skeleton of a web page that can be uploaded and uh, put onto the uh, solid waste area of the Thurston County website, which really focuses on um, what businesses can do for food rescue opportunities from the Thurston County Food Bank, for residents, um, what additional programs like the gleaning programs, the uh, school garden programs, everything that the Thurston County Food Bank is doing and how we can help elevate that messaging to really rescue food um, before it gets to the uh, need to be uh, recovered as waste. So um, that's a really exciting thing that I'll be ending my time on um, and uh, other than that, the plan is for the next person who comes into my position, um, they will be left in a, in a great spot to where they can review and update the educational materials for businesses moving into the next year, um, where they will have all the, the work that I've done identifying which businesses um, that will be impacted by 2025, who they'll need to contact. Um, and they'll be in a spot to continue working with our external and internal partners. Um, they will also be able to jump right in and offer um, technical assistance, hopefully, to businesses that request it. Again, LeMay has been great um, with being a partner on this law and have um, uh, Emmett over at LeMay has offered to help um with some of the business interactions. Um, so that momentum is not lost while I'm away or after I leave. So um, that is kind of the, the vision moving forward for the organics management law. Next slide. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the polystyrene or styrofoam ban. <laughs> that goes into effect on June 1st, 2024. Um, so I have created a flyer, a full page, eight and a half by 11 um, flyer that identifies the law and what products are impacted. And on the reverse side, um, 
some of the alternatives available for businesses um, to use in place of the styrofoam. Um, so this will be going out later this month before I leave. Um, a lot of the information um, is going to be held in, uh, through the Department of Ecology, who will who is also enforcing it. So it's pretty much we're just the letting our businesses know in our county so they're, they have the heads up before it goes into effect. Um, and I received a list of food establishment, um, a list of food establishments in Thurston County from Public Health and Social Services. So that's who will be getting this flyer. Next slide. And then finally, um, the Parks Waste and Recycling Program I've been working on. So after some discovery, we learned that um, the Burfoot Park is currently the only park in Thurston, the only Thurston County Park who have recycling bins on their property. However, they are outdated, incorrect, and not being used um, appropriately. So um, I have started to develop and create a plan um, to update first birth Burfoot Park with new signage. Um, I believe right now they have glass as an option, compost as an option, and garbage as well as plastic recycling. We are simplifying it to just having garbage and recycling. Um, we're taking out the glass and the compost because those are two streams that are going to be highly contaminated and not as well used at a park. So simplifying it, testing it out at Burfoot, and then the long-term overall plan is to then um, expand the recycling to all parks, uh, Thurston County Parks. So um, in correlation with this, um, the park staff will be educated as well on what is recyclable at, specifically for the parks because um, it'll be a little bit different than a typical recycling uh, at your home. Next slide, please. Well, I just wanted to add on this real quick, Danielle. That so, while we're doing the the pilot at Burfoot, it'll um, be a little while before we can look at kind of how we can expand that and if we're able to expand it to the other parks. But um, since there's bins in place at Burfoot, um, we thought it would be a good opportunity to test it and make sure that it's something that we can adopt more widely at all of our parks if possible. Yeah, it's definitely a long-term plan, not a short-term plan. <laughs> and right. that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Yeah, we'll turn it over to Hope for um, a program support update. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, so we are kicking off event season, so that pretty much includes tabling um, big outreach events. So tonight is actually our first one. Rob and I will be at the Billy Craig Jr. event celebrating the life and legacy of a Nisqually tribal member of Billy Craig Jr. He was very um, in integral part of the salmon fishing rights laws here in Washington state. So we will be there, um, it is a youth focused event. Uh, we will be there talking to People about you know, solid waste in Thurston County, but also sharing opportunities um, just to get involved with us. And it's been a lot of fun preparing for these tabling events. I've gotten to make um, a coloring sheet and a crossword puzzle for some of our youth events and update button designs. We have a button maker <laughs> and update. Um, we have a spinning wheel that people can spin and answer a waste related question to win a prize. And so um, updating those questions, making sure they're relevant and um, feasible for kids of all ages. Um, and we have about one outreach event, tabling event that we'll be at um, for every month through October. So we have, Danielle did a really awesome job of reaching out um, to different places to see where we can table. So we'll be um, you know, like at Tenino for Earth Day events, and um, we'll be at the Lacey Spring Fair, the Thurston County Fair, all, all sorts of different things. Um, and we'll be partnering with the Master Recycler Composters at a lot of these events, the volunteers, um, and they will be helping support me as I will be the one leading most of these tabling events as well. Um, yeah, it's, and we have four different themes, like it says up there. 
Um, so uh, depending on what the event is. So focus on durables is one of the themes. So that's more uh, kind of zero waste. How can you maybe change some things out in your household um, to reduce waste even getting to the landfill? So whether that's using a reusable water bottle or um, like one of our giveaway prizes is a set of reusable straws rather than having plastic straws. So just kind of encouraging folks to reuse um, or fix like the fix it fairs um, rather than getting rid of and buying something new. And then we also have a youth theme, like I mentioned. So that'll be tonight's first youth event, um, which is really exciting. So that's more focused on um, obviously kiddo education. <laughs> and then we have a general, um, general theme. So just for recycling and garbage overall. And um, than a food and yard waste or organics theme. And so Danielle made these new posters. These are floor banners um, that will be printed out to have at each um, tabling event based on what the theme is. So um, food and yard waste, and then general recycling and garbage and then durables moving from left to right. Anything else you wanted to add on that, Danielle? No, I think you, you covered it all. Thank you, Hope. Yeah, okay, next slide, a couple more things for me. Um, so I've really taken over the social media. Um, Danielle does a great job of outlining what kind of content we want to um, get out to the public. And then I get to create um, our graphics and write captions and do all of that fun stuff. So it's been really awesome coming into this role and getting to have um, some creativity behind the, <laughs> the seriousness as well. So this is an example um, of a graphic I made in response to information that we've received from the Waste and Recovery Center where they said they were receiving a lot of contaminated food and yard waste loads. And so they asked, you know, hey, can you do some more education to the public so that our loads aren't contaminated? And so this is just kind of um, a copy of our guide, but it's in cartoon form, it's a little more fun. <laughs> so I, I made this so that we could put this on social media and just kind of remind residents, hey, these are the only things that are accepted in your food and yard waste curbside cart and make sure to not bag any of your materials. So that's kind of a big part of our social media plan is you know when we get input from our partners to make sure that we're using that information to do outreach um, accordingly. And then, yeah, we have a few um, different engagement campaigns um, that will be starting up here in the next few months. And uh, we continue to gain followers on our platforms. And um, like we have outlined here, people really seem to um, engage the best with events um, and then waste reduction and recycling tips and then just updates on what's happening at the work. So those are the kind of areas where we see the most people liking the posts or commenting or sharing with other people, which really helps guide what kind of information we put out there. Um, next slide. And then the final thing that I've really been working on most recently was helping um, Amanda Romero with creating a website page for a community litter cleanup volunteer program. Um, so this is just a screen grab of like the top half of the web page. Um, and so this uh, cleanup volunteer program moved from the road operations division to now the solid waste. Um, it's overseen by Amanda right now. And so I helped her put together this website that has resources um, for individuals to report litter or dump sites. Um, it gives a little background and history of the program, explains um, you know, how much waste we've picked up historically and um, it has a link to for volunteers to sign up as well as for volunteers to track how much waste they're collecting so that Laura, our planner, can <laughs> crunch those numbers and help us figure out how much data or how much um, garbage we're picking up each year. And of course, that has our waiver and safety guidelines so that could say they didn't know not to not to do something. That's all on the website there. So it's pretty robust and this should be going live here soon um, once it has the green light from everyone. But we're really excited to get this um, out to the public so that there's just more information, I guess, um, out there that this is a program that we have. And it's a really great opportunity for different people to get involved, um, whether that's, you know, retired people who are looking for something to do or like a scout troop or, um, that means volunteer hours. So we are excited to have, have this coming online. And I think that's all for me, unless 
Anyone had anything to add? <laughs> Quick question. Please. Sure. Uh, when your volunteer groups are done picking up litter, and I guess sure. bagging mm -hmm. litter, I guess that's where we'd go. What's the process so that they can get it to the dump without sure. some kind of a fee? Uh, and, you know, tied in with that. Yeah. So Carl Martin, who's our um, staff that's on that works for our litter pickup program, he will go to wherever they left the bags and he'll pick them up, and then he gets to bring them to the waste and recovery center. And I guess you know, there's been situations where those bags get run over by some not in spread, <laughs> you know, spreads it out again. So if if they wanted to. Mm -hmm save the county from having to go pick it up because maybe it'll wait there a week and that isn't going to work because sure. something goes haywire. So, so that's, yeah. How, that's can we, how can we make some arrangements to help those folks to yeah. be able to get it dropped off? Yeah, um, that's a good point. And that's something that Amanda and I kind of discussed um, to see, you know, the, the bags that we give out to the volunteers are bright orange and I think they say Thurston County on them. I'm not entirely sure, <laughs> but I know they're bright orange. So um, it was thought about having a conversation with the toll house staff at the Waste and Recovery Center that, hey, when, you know, people bring in loads with these bags or if, you know, for some reason that wouldn't work, maybe coming up with a ticket system, you know, they get a ticket that says, hey, I was a volunteer with this program and we can drop off these loads for free. So um, I think that's a good point. And it's something they that we it looks yeah. like Jeff. Um, Jeff has the answer. I bet. Yeah, uh, I bet Jeff has actually, the we answer. Have, I, it, we actually have that set up out here at the toll house. Um, if if we have a group that that performs that and they bring in the bags, which saves Carl from having to pick them up, they receive. You know, there's no there's no fee for that. So, so you know, those yeah, bags okay. those so bags are easily <laughs> discernible because they're bright orange and have our our logo on them. Um, so so yes, yeah, so if they uh, do bring them out, that they can do that for free. At no cost. Okay, thank you. There we go. Didn't mean me speculating. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. I know one of the concepts for having the bag sit by the side of the road was to promote the idea that there is a litter cleanup program. So that's then opposed to like some guy running with a bag for fun. So and it's just interesting. <laughs> well, he's not yet to run over the people for fun. Yeah. Once yeah. in a while. So yeah. our society has changed quite yeah. a bit. Great. Thank you very much. Sure. So we're we going on to a master garden recycling program now. Yes, Corey, you are up. Hello, everyone. Um, again, my name is Corey Carlton. I'm the program manager for the Master Recycler Composter and the WC Extension Master Gardener programs. Um, Jenny Post will also be helping with um, this presentation today. Our first slide here just covers um, our 2020, well, actually the first few slides just cover our 2023 accomplishments. Um, our first one focuses and specifically about our volunteer um, uh, service numbers. And so last year in 2023, for both programs, we managed uh, 236 volunteers, 56 of the Master Recycler Composter volunteers gave um, 2,037 hours of service, and then 180 Master Gardeners gave 14,457 hours of service. I will say that this is uh, recorded hours. Last year, we did implement a new uh, volunteer service tracking system, and there was a learning curve. So not all hours are accurately reflected in this process. Um, traditionally, we, uh, for our programming, we're between 18 and 20,000 hours uh, per year. So we do know that we're down this year and that um, we can definitely relate to the idea that there's a learning curve when we are implementing a new um, volunteer tracking system as far as what their service hours are. So uh, we are working and continuing with uh, educational opportunities for them to learn that process so that it's easier. As we all know, you know, it takes a little while to get uh, adjusted to a new system. And when we do that, eventually we'll get back up to um, our kind of targeted normal uh, operating service hours. We also trained uh, 11 new master recycler composters last year. Uh, training for that started in September, ran through uh, November on Thursday nights and on Saturday mornings. Um, we had both in-class um, classroom presentations as well as field-based um, experiences. And the same thing for the Master Gardener volunteer training, uh, which graduated 35 graduates out of that particular program. Next slide. A couple of our uh, 
accomplishments, and I break these down into two sections, uh, external and internal. External is the um, kind of what we do that involves uh, folks outside of our programming, but we also, as Jenny and I work on um, making sure that our volunteers also have the knowledge and are up to date on the most current practices and information. So there is a lot of internal training that also happens. So let's first with, uh, start with the external. Uh, last year, we have we operate question answer clinics. Uh, these question answer clinics can either be in person or online. We do have a general email inbox. Um, it's just the word master at our normal uh, county um, ending, which is co.thurston.wa.us. So anybody in the county can email our general inbox and ask a waste reduction or gardening question. And so we have a set of those um, 320 clinics were um, held online, but we also had a, a number of um, in-person question and answer clinics. And those are in the form of typically at outreach events, um, home and garden shows, community festivals, um, specific um, other organizations that are hosting events where we're a partner in. Um, so yeah, so those are kind of things. In fact, this weekend we're doing the Lacey um, cultural celebration. And so those are type, sub, some of the activities where we hold these kind of outreach booth activities, but have an ability for the general public to ask uh, their questions. Um, so of the, at those question answer clinics, we had 19,925 tracked inquiries, um, which means that as clients um, and community members are coming up to the booth, after they're done um, um, talking with that individual, they then on a tracking chart, write down what type of question they asked and also all their question uh, categories. And so that's where we can track at least 19,000 inquiries. Um, and again, that's volunteers, that's part of their roles in serving at these question answer clinics. Uh, the other part of it, of our externals, are demonstration gardens. We have three demonstration gardens throughout the county. Uh, Closed Loop Park is out at the Thurston County Waste and Recovery Center. Our farmer's market um, garden is right adjacent to the Olympia Farmer's Market. And then we have our Dirtworks Garden, which is in Yager Park. Um, and both the farmer's market and um, uh, Dirtworks are a part of City of Olympia property uh, during their park system. So Dirtworks is located inside Yager Park across from Capitol Mall. At each of these spaces, there are composting areas that uh, need to be maintained. So we process the uh, yard debris that is actually produced by the gardens, as well as we have worm bins at each of the gardens as well, that we also process any um, food, extra food scraps specific, specifically for our um, dirt works one because we, that's where our food bank gardens as well. And so uh, we have our worm bins that uh, process any food scraps that aren't not, not necessarily edible or able to be donated to the Thurston County Food Bank at that uh, facility. Uh, there was 306 work parties that maintain the space. If you add up all of all of the spaces between all three gardens, um, it's just about five acres of space that are, uh, again, maintained by volunteers as demonstration gardens in order for the general public to learn best practices. And then at those facilities, we also hosted about 20 composting workshops, and um, there was two of them that were online via Zoom, but all the rest were in person at these facilities um, or out and about in, at other um, of our uh, community spaces. Internally, uh, I would say the most thing that we focus on with our volunteers is making sure that they have up-to-date information and that they feel like they have the resources and tools in order to look up um, answers to questions that the clients may or that clients ask them but they may not necessarily know right off the top of their head so we encourage them not to memorize everything but to know where to look for the resources in order to get the answers uh, that our community members um, are asking of us so uh, we have hosted three what we call cafes which are monthly meetings that we do this both in person and online in fact last night we had our official kickoff where we went and set up our actual outreach booths our, qu our question answer clinics and we went through all the materials that we actually are going to share with the general public this year um, so we did some role playing and figured out as far as what uh, we actually um, uh, so that they feel comfortable knowing the materials, but also there's a couple activities about can this be recycled or not. And so we went through some of those scenarios there last night at our um, kickoff in order to make sure that um, they were ready for all of our upcoming outreach events. And then we also provide 20, we also provide 26 other continuing education opportunities for our master recycler composters to learn more about the systems in place. Um, so that could either be a tour, for example, of going up to Brady Trucking to see our new composting facility there. In the past, we've done Silver Springs. We've also, um, we've also done uh, tours of our MRF, 
um, up in Tacoma. So lots of different ways that we also provide opportunities for the volunteers to see our role and why it's important in the bigger picture of waste reduction. Next slide. Okay, uh, we do have a partner organization, the WC Extension Master Gardener Program. And um, because I manage both of those programs, and uh, be also because the fact that a lot of our volunteers are both either uh, master gardeners in addition to being a master recycler composter, there are some unique um, fostered uh, opportunities to share both. I'm only going to highlight two of the ones that were very unique last year for specifically because um, the Master Gardener program turned 50 years old last year. And um, with that, uh, offered two opportunities for the Master Recycler composters to partner in with those anniversary celebrations. The first one was uh, what we called the Master Your Garden Compost and Recycling Question Answer Clinic booths at Capitol Mall. Um, our first question answer clinic for the Master Gardener program started at the Tacoma Mall 50 years ago. And so we decided in honor of the 50th anniversary to recreate that question answer clinic at the Capitol Mall here locally. And so over two weekends, we hosted booths um, and you'll see those photos on the, uh, the far uh, right side of your screen um, where we had Master Recycler Composter tabling. We also had interactive activities and games. Uh, you'll see in the far right, um, this is right in front of the Macy's um, entryway. Uh, we brought in a worm bin so the kids could actually see worms there. It was an engaging part um, and they did a bunch of games and activities also there as well. Um, over that two weekends, we interacted with uh, over 4,000 people um, that had answered, again, waste reduction questions um, for those that were attending those two weekends um, right before Easter, which is from the mall's perspective, those are the two busiest weekends at the mall. And so we specifically selected those time frames just to make sure that we were getting the most traffic um, during that time frame. Uh, the other uh, major event that we got to partner with was uh, with the anniversary celebration is uh, the photos that are on the um, left side of those particular photos there. And that's with the Shilter Family Fall Festival. So Shelter Family Farm is located in the Nisqually uh, Delta, um, River Delta there. Um, and they uh, contacted us to um, ask ways that we could partner to celebrate the uh, Master Gardener 50th anniversary. And so what we decided um, as a good way to recognize um, and celebrate this is that they cut their corn maze in the shape of the 50th anniversary logo. And you can see the upper left uh, photo there. That's an aerial photo of the corn maze. Um, and it's shaped again with the Master Gardener 50th anniversary logo. And each of the center section where the 50 is are the petals there. And each of those sections had uh, container displays um, and Master Recycler composters put it, uh, their theme of reduce, reuse, recycle. In, and you can see the photo below that one was a uh, display, display specifically for um, made out of all recycled materials, but highlighted ways that were best practices for reducing, reusing, and recycling. Uh, anybody that went through the actual corn maze got to vote on the displays, and Master Recycler Composters won the most unique display um, from the goers that uh, participated. Volunteers also created trail signs. So as um, uh, corn maze participants were walking through the trails of uh, the actual corn maze rose itself, they had Every periodically, they had signs that had waste reduction information and gardening tips along the way. And so they could also learn about um, both of those, those topics as they moved through the corn maze and then tried to figure their way to the end. Overall, over 50,000 people attended the festival for the entire month of October and over 30,000 actually walked through the corn maze. So for us, 30,000 people actually got waste reduction information just by walking through the corn maze and uh, engaging in a fun experience. So. Again, that was just highlights one of the partnership opportunities where we have both the Master Gardeners and the Master Recycling Composters partnering in a way that um, could benefit both. Next slide. And I'm gonna turn it over to Jenny. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jenny Post. I'm the uh, program assistant and I work with Corey. Uh, my position is part-time. Um, in addition to all of the uh, wonderful accomplishments that Corey has already um, uh, gone over with you. Uh, one I want to um, highlight now is our um, summer youth program uh, returned in 2023 after a hiatus during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, 
an MRC's led uh, a worm composting class um, at our uh, Dirtworks demonstration garden for kids ages uh, four through 12. And besides learning how to uh, compost, the best part of the class was um, hearing their um, squeals of excitement um, when the, the kids saw baby worms um, hatching out of the cocoons. So here are some pictures of, um, you know, the, the worm composting and um, and the volunteers helping them um, get to know this process. Uh, next slide, please. So every year we have a, an awards um, event and uh, where we recognize volunteer service and celebrate their years of uh, service milestones. Uh, this year we um, acknowledged uh, Leanne Perry, who is in the far left photo, uh, for being the MRC of the year. Uh, for her Little Free Pantry project. Uh, Leanne initiated this project uh, in late 2021 and has since developed a committee of like-minded food rescuers and has built, who have built and organized two Little Free Pantries in Tumwater. Um, so people that have excess in their pantries can drop off uh, non-perishable food and hygiene products um, directly to these pantries 24 seven. And some of the uh, products that are being um, put into the pantries include uh, canned goods, chili, soups, box dinners, pasta, uh, tissues, toothpaste and toothbrushes. Um, and the first pantry was uh, located at the Mountain View Church on Israel Road. And the church is now uh, helping to manage the pantry. Uh, they have reported that it's hard to keep enough food inside because um, it often runs out every day. And then the second pantry uh, was built at, um, built by New Market Skills uh, students and it's uh, located on 49th Avenue Southwest near Black Lake. Uh, Leanne um, told us that it, uh, when she was stocking the pantry one day, um, someone arrived and came up to her and said, you know, this pantry has saved my life more than once. Um, so in addition to helping with food security in our community, um, organizations and um, residents now have a way of donating food that would um, maybe go um, be destined to the landfill um, And now that food is feeding people. So that um, takes care of my slides. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, so then I'll just wrap up uh, what our 2024 goals. Um, traditionally with our Master Recycler Composter Program, we are, we're pretty cyclical in what types of activities that we've been doing. We have, um, again, our, our kind of core functions are, we train new volunteers, we maintain and provide opportunities for our current volunteers, again, for continuing education opportunities. Um, we also coordinate all of our community outreach in the form of different forms, whether it be via our demonstration gardens and maintaining those spaces, or also through all of our community service and outreach projects through our question and answer clinics through community events. So if you look at those things, uh, right now I'm currently training master gardeners. Uh, their training goes from January through uh, first part of June. Master recycler composters will start in September, go through the end of the year as well. And I just do that every year. Um, I always are always training a new group of volunteers into the mix. Um, and with that, there's typically, again, over 200 volunteers within the program that we're managing their service. Each of those volunteers have different expectations for, uh, for keeping their certification. So with Master Recycler Composters, they have to give a minimum of 20 hours of actual service and five hours of continuing education to keep their certification from year to year. Um, and so this year's group, like I said last night, we met for the first time uh, to review all of our out up upcoming outreach event activities. And so um, we reviewed the processes for that, how to record their service hours, all of that stuff um, last night. So that's part of our uh, just managing, again, uh, the volunteers. And then our other important part is our demonstration gardens right now. We have a bunch of workshops. We have a ton of different activities all happening um, at our demonstration gardens. These, again, public spaces for the general public to come learn and also promote uh, different types of waste reduction and wise uses of our resources there. Um, we are implementing new irrigation systems. We're implementing um, all kinds of new uh, labeling and information as our uh, website will be upgraded later on this year. And so we want to make sure that we're transitioning um, that information to our website, but also you'll end up seeing uh, a bunch of new kiosks, educational kiosks that will also be part of our demonstration garden um, education opportunities will be highlighted in those at those parts of those of the particular gardens during those spaces. So thank you, Corey. That's all I have. Yeah.
Um, I, I, I had a question about there's a some kind of demonstration garden down by uh, the Lowe's hardware store in Lacey. And it seems to be gone at the district here. Is that one of your former sites or maybe it's an opportunity to actually do another one or something like that? Um, those That one is not part of our system. We have only three uh, official what we call demonstration gardens. These are actual gardens that have memorandums of understanding with the landowners and go through and, ha and have been in existence for many years. In fact, Closed Loop celebrates um, 30 years. Dirtworks is celebrating 35 years this year and Farmer's Market is 29 years. So all of these gardens have been in our existence for a long period of time. We also have partner gardens. For example, we have some gardens here at the Thurston County Fairgrounds that we partner and help use as pollinator gardens. Um, as far as education, but there are a lot of other community gardens around the county, uh, but capacity wise, we just don't, we can't take on all of them. <laughs> so we we do provide per supporting education. Um, and if someone from those particular spaces need help, we have been in places where our volunteers have gone out and done an evaluation or a, a site evaluation with that particular group to help them with trying to manage those spaces. But we, our three demonstration gardens and our smaller partner gardens that we have here are, are um, is capacity for us. Great, thank you. Any other questions for Corey before we go on? I have a I have a comment that I'd like to make. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go back and uh, mention Jennifer about the uh, the pantries that uh, that are in uh, that are in Tumwater. Uh, they are used quite a bit, especially the one at the um, at the church there and, uh, by seniors and they're seniors who are coming from many of them from some of those uh, mobile home parks and so forth. We had a conversation with one of the um, elders, elderly woman who uh, would come off and on. And she said one of the things that she misses the most is that she was a gardener. And she went through one of your programs or something years and years ago. And, you know, she's not as physically able to do that. And so she's been coming to these little pantries and, and getting things that she needs. And um, something else that you had done sparked her and said, you know, I have this small little space. I could grow something small. I don't have to, you know, depend on this. You could tell she was really independent, but. You know, you have no idea programs like you're doing and the the, the takeoffs from those, uh, the people they're impacting. And uh, it's always good to be around when someone comes or benefits from it and tells you about it. So I wanted to tell you those are making a difference. Yeah, thank, thank you for sharing that. Okay, we've got... Uh, 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 part C of agenda item seven and uh, manager's report, also part B and before roundtable. So we need to uh, probably, you know, be uh, quick with the next two agendas if we can. So go ahead. Uh, is Jennifer Johnson then going to do first or you want to introduce him, Scott? Oh, I will. I'll let um, Jennifer introduce her stuff. Hi, uh, thank you for inviting me to be here. I'm Jennifer Johnson. I work with Thurston County Public Health and Social Services and I work in the Environmental Health Division. And um, I was sort of assuming that somebody would pull up my presentation for me. Is that not a safe assumption? There we go. I don't know if you're sharing it. Oh. Brain fart. Sorry, bias. <laughs> Where did that go? Oop. We have an enlarged screen. One second. Love to share with you all. Oh, super. Thank you so much. Let's do it on the keyboard. Uh, thank you. And then let us share. There we go. Yeah. Just jumping ahead of myself. Okay. There we go. Can you guys see? Yes. Yes. There we go. Okay, fabulous. Thank you so much. And then I just ask you to uh, advance the slide. Yeah. Okay, please advance the slide. 
Okay, so um, we implement the household and public education portion of the hazardous waste management plan. And our goal is to really prevent the use of hazardous products. And that's kind of our first stage is the prevention. And I'll talk about how we do that. And then our next component of our education is really about the safe storage of household hazardous materials. And then for a final message, it's really about promoting Hazo House and the free safe disposal location in Thurston County. Um, so we do this through our uh, home and yard presentations and workshops. We do a lot of tabling at fairs and events. And then we have some partnerships that I'd like to talk about a little bit more. So if we could advance the slide. So just really quickly kind of going through some highlights from last year. As I said, we do a lot of workshops. Um, we talk to folks about creating a healthier indoor environment. And really that involves, you know, as far as household hazardous materials, that's really the cleaning products portion of the common hazards that folks have in their homes. And then with the gardening, it's the bug and weed control products that folks use. And we've been doing this really great project where we're working with very low income populations to try to provide with them information on how to care for their homes and then also a, a green cleaning kit that we offer them for each person who fills out this pledge that's on the screen. And the pledge is really a, a social marketing tool for folks to make a commitment to making changes and then when we provide them the green cleaning kit, that provides the actual materials that they need to overcome barriers that they may have. Next slide, please. We have a robust point of purchase program. This means that every location where you can buy pesticides, we try to have information about how to have safer gardens and how to avoid the use of pesticides. So we have these common sense gardening racks at just about every nursery and box store in Thurston County. We provide a ton of information, including some of the solid waste information that you've heard about today, the rack cards on you know where to take unwanted medic medications, um, where to take unwanted hazardous materials, where the, where the drop boxes are, all kinds of information. We also have a newsletter that we send electronically about six times a year. And we're getting more and more signups for that every day, honestly, um, through the website and through our events. We're up to about 800 people, always happy to include solid waste messages in that newsletter. And we do a fair amount of collaboration with Rob to ensure that those messages get put out there. Okay, let's go ahead and switch the slide, please. This is a really important program that we have where we partner directly with childcare staff and operators. And this right here pictured is an example of the Healthy Homes Kit that folks receive who take that pledge. These are, you, you, we don't have these just at tabling events. This is really people who've received a workshop, sat through a presentation with us. Um, but this is something that we provide to our our um, child care operators in Thurston County, and we do a fair amount of outreach to ensure that they're reducing the hazards that they're using inside of those child cares. In child cares, as you can imagine, the biggest hazard is bleach. And um, so really trying to educate folks about when disinfection is necessary and how to properly disinfect. Many people don't realize that you need to clean a surface before it's disinfected. Um, and for bleach, it needs to sit wet on a surface for a certain amount of time to properly disinfect. So that's the kind of information that we provide to our child care providers. Next slide, please. So jumping into, I just tried to give you a little idea about what we did last year and now what our plans are this year. Um, kind of more of the same, of course, you know, trying to get the word out to more and more people. Um, I did want to focus just for a minute on the, I, I talked about the 
very low income population that we are trying to get this healthy homes information to. We have a great partnership happening with the Family Support Center and we provide these healthy homes kits as they work with their clients to get them into housing situations. Um, many of them for the first time, they are provided with these healthy homes kits. So that's great because right from the beginning, folks are learning how to care for their homes using less toxic products. Um, and we're continuing that partnership and we're really excited to, once folks are living in the landing, that's the uh, apartment complex that the Family Support Center along with many others have helped to create over in West Olympia, we'll be giving a workshop regular workshops for those folks and providing everybody with our Healthy Homes Kits. Um, as I stated, we do provide information so that folks can learn where to safely take unwanted medications. Um, and that's a drop box. So we have those, we have the information at all of the pharmacies in town, plain clinics, um, hospice workers have our information and these disposal locations are, um, just for folks who don't know, there are many local pharmacies, including, and I just say this to make it easy for folks to remember, um, Rite Aids, Walmarts, Safeways, they all have the drop boxes in the pharmacies. If you ever get to a public site and the drop box is not open, feel free to send me an email because we do have a very good partnership with the State Department of Health where we are wanting them to really know when the drop boxes are not being emptied or if it's locked. Um, sometimes store staff don't realize that you know people don't have to wait in line at the pharmacy to use this drop box. They can just walk right up. So the drop box should be open every hour that the pharmacy is open. Next slide, please. I feel like I'm racing through this a little bit, but I want to make sure that you all have enough time to, to ask questions if you have any. So as I said, we have our um, Thurston Home and Garden that we send out six times a year. Really excited about a partnership with the Nisqually Tribe where they contacted us to ask if I could do a septic sense workshop out there and then the person I was working with said, well, what else can you do? So of course I was sure to let them know about what else we can do. And so we have a series of four workshops that we're doing for the Nisqually tribe this year. I'm hopeful that that partnership will you know, gain us entry into the other local tribes in our area. Next slide, please. We're part of a lot of networking and collaborations. Um, I'm one of the co-facilitators for the Thurston County Eco Network, which is a group of local environmental educators in Thurston County. I sit on the steering committee for the Eco Pro um, Landscape Coalition. Just really grateful for all of our partners that we work with, um, including, of course, Public Works. Next slide, please. Okay, that was a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Um, here's our contacts. At this point, public health is really continuing to try to get fully staffed. Um, and so we are in the process of hiring somebody right now. It's just myself and our uh, program assistant and then our supervisor. And um, yeah, here's all our contacts. Love to hear from you. Love for you to sign up for our Thurston Home and Garden newsletter if you haven't already, so that you can get some of those messages delivered right into your inbox. Uh, let me know any questions, any collaboration opportunities. I'm all ears all the time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so we're about at time. Uh, Jeff, what if we put you first on the agenda next month? I can I could probably do it in about two or three minutes. All right, we can hang in for two minutes. Go for it. <laughs> okay, so this got the three things to mention. First one is just to let you know um, on the Waste Recovery Center Compactor Replacement Project, um, February thirteenth, uh, we received one proposal uh, to our request for proposals. Uh, the proposal was submitted by SSI, which was a Portland-based company, and they're the makers of our current compactor, actually. 
Uh, right now, our review teams evaluating those proposals for adequacy. Um, uh, we'll following steps will be to negotiate a potential contract, and ultimately we'll be bringing the proposed contract before the Board of County Commissioners at a public hearing uh, at a later date. So that's the first one. Uh, the other item for infant for your information is a potential solar installation that we, which we spoke briefly about uh, earlier at the Waste Recovery Center. Um, yesterday, uh, the Board of County Commissioners approved a pair of agreements with EDF Renewables, which is the contract that we've been working with at their, at their meeting again yesterday afternoon uh, for the proposed installation of a solar panel array over a 25-acre portion of the closed landfill out here at the wharf. Uh, the two agreements that were approved or one is an option to lease agreement, which is for a two-year period. And really, this document sets out parameters for ongoing negotiations of a long-term mm -hmm. lease agreement for the installation, operation, maintenance, and ultimate removal of the, of the solar array. And uh, kind of adjacent to that was the second agreement, uh, also for the same two-year period, uh, was a right of entry agreement, which will allow uh, EDF renewables over that period to perform some uh, initial site investigative work just to make sure that the viability for the site uh, is, is going to work for their for their proposed project. So at this point, we'll start moving forward with that and the contract negotiations between our, like, our legal uh, councils and their and theirs uh, will, will begin. Um, of course, uh, these two both of these two agreements had um, language pertaining to liability concerns and insurance requirements for the contractor. And then my last item is just um, my first reminder uh, to SWAC uh, members um, that if you're contacted by commercial vendors uh, regarding any solid waste operations or issues or other opportunities that might actually impact Thurston County's facilities or programs, to just um, direct them to us, direct them to public works staff. Um, so if you have a third party that's you know contacting you about you know any kind of, uh, like I said, or anything we do with our operations or issues that, or uh, our facilities. So just that reminder. And with that, I am done. And I think we are only a minute over. So a minute over. Oh, man. Could I, uh, could I ask Jeff something? Here before, before we call it yeah. rinse. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what you're referring to, Jeff. We we have been contacted as commissioners by uh, the contractor that has the new contract on, on solid waste. And uh, I think it's been brought to our attention that it might not be appropriate for us to have individual meetings uh, with that provider. And so I just wanted to let them know we're not being unsociable. Just uh, we want to do the right thing at the right time and in front of the board at one of our work sessions where we can all hear what's going on might be the more appropriate activity, shy of that to, for those folks, maybe to, like you say, get in touch with yourself or other management here at Public Works. So uh, right. I don't want the perception of any inappropriate uh, or lack of fairness to take place. Hey, thank you very much. I had just one, one thing I wanted to thank uh, uh, Thurston County Solway staff for, um, uh, allowing a uh, training that I put on to tour the Hassel House last month. Uh, so specifically, Gerald Towsley, Mike Deacon, and Bryce Mode, who were very gracious in spending some time with uh, a group uh, that came, and they were from all around the state and Oregon, too. Uh, other people who run HHW, Hassel House Waste, Hassel Houses elsewhere uh, around the Northwest primarily to see, and they were impressed with the facility and had a great post there with Bryce and uh, Mike. So thank you very much on behalf of that, uh, uh, the NAMA group, the NAMA chapter that hosted that. So that's all I have. Anything else we need to do last minute here before we call it? Okay, I guess we're adjourned then. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. See thank you next you. month. Everybody. Good, Good day. Day. Yeah. Christina, you got a second?